X-Men, the animated s series from the 90s, season 4, episodes 9 and 10, One Man's Worth, parts 1 and 2. Thoughts? So, yeah, another two episodes I absolutely love. Spoilers for the show leading up to, including these two episodes. In the description box, the top link will allow you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. Extremely important cause. And then there are a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important cause. So, let's dive into part one of One Man's Worth. So, yeah, the episode almost immediately jumps into the alternate present day, and yet again... As with other time travel episodes on the show, we have a very strong Terminator vibe with hunter killers, big tanks, you know, robots that try to, to kill human beings and, and take over the world, of course. And I appreciate that even when Beast isn't on screen, they still talk about, oh, you know, I'm sure if he were here, he would make a reference to, you know the the apple from the the garden of eden and i really appreciate xavier's line you know i disagree that it was knowledge that destroyed you know paradise that do that doesn't jive with his way of thinking and i am 100% with him on that there are a lot of mutants in the first you know in part 1 of this that's yeah very very cool to see you know, when when even, like, who's that, like, I want to say, like, Mr. Sinister was fighting alongside good mutants, you know they're fighting a really serious threat. And Magneto is there on, on their side as well, and a very capable strategist. Really cool to see all these, you know, the, the alternate present, the, the uniforms they have, especially love beasts. Really, really cool, and a lot of action in this two-parter, and this first part especially has, like, big battle scenes. Really cool to see, and yeah, Storm and Wolverine are actually together, married and everything. And, let's see, yeah, and, and you know, I... I forget which of, it's it's either Storm or, or Wolverine or like, is it really possible that just one man, you know, dying would lead to all of this? Or, you know, if he survives, we could prevent all of this, which, you know, kind of tells me that it is, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful life if it had time travel and, you know, killer robots and such. So, yeah, I, I approve. And I quite like, you know, Xavier addresses, which, you know, some of us have raised in real life as well, you know, genetic mutation does not work like Pokemon. It's not just like one generation and suddenly they're completely different and have superpowers and such, you know. And I like that this is, you know, this is clearly a very different Xavier than the one we're used to. And the, the, yeah, you know, seeing him as, as a young man and this thing with, no, they're not hippies, they're beatniks. Hippies came later, you know, not everybody can, can tell the difference. And yeah, you know, the, the racism, I think it's maybe especially the fact that there's an interracial couple, you know, that really sets off the, the guy running the place. Let's see, and I think that might be yeah, and and the, yeah, the episode ends where it began with uh, you know Xavier exploding in the yeah, and that brings us to part two, and yeah, the you know right after the building has exploded, the the guy who ran the I guess a coffee shop, whatever, you know, he thinks that they destroyed the college because of the, the violence that they were involved in earlier, even, you know, though, like, they were basically, they were provoked into that, there, you know, there was no violence there until he, you know, yeah, he, he started, but, but yeah, you know, it's a, it's 
a really good thing to to make sure kids know. You know, just because you're involved with violence at one point and then you're spotted near other violence doesn't mean you had anything to do with that. You know, it's a, it's the classic kind of you know the guy ran over to to help the guy who had been stabbed, but now his fingerprints are on the knife, and there was a witness that you know saw him cradling the body, kind of thing. And yeah, very cool to see Forge as like full cyborg. Like I guess his head is the one part that's no you know not like robotic now. And let's. See. Yeah, and, and Master Mold says, you know, he wants to target Fitzroy and Bantam, you know, and, you know, he, yeah, he wants Nimrod to attack them, and it's, again, this thing of, you know, Master Mold is basically a fascist leader, and fascists discard anything that they no longer deem useful to them, no matter how, you know, like, clearly Fitzroy and Bantam have been helping for, you know, a long time, but, you know, and they even betrayed other mutants to do so, but that's not enough, you know, and, let's see, I think that might, and it's also, yeah, it works as a, a message for the kids of, you know, don't work for someone who fundamentally does not respect you and does not think that you should exist, you know, if they're telling you to fight others like you, and, you know, in this show it's mutants, but, you know, in real life, you know, for a very long time now, Dave Rubin has, you know, argued against gay people, and now that he's, you know, adopting a lot of the people who, you know, have have been following him for a long time and have supported the, the shows he makes, when the, you know, when he's saying things they like, now they've turned on him because they've always hated gay people. You've seen the same thing with, you know, Ben Shapiro is a Jewish man who has long argued in favor of, you know, really conservative causes, but actually, I don't even remember, who was it that he was deemed to no longer support enough? I, f I forget, but now he's the target of really anti-Semitic attacks, you know, and yeah. In, in both cases, if these two had aligned with the left, who've been fighting for gay people and Jewish people, you know, for a very long time now, yeah, they, they wouldn't be getting attacked by their, by the audience they've cultivated. And, let's see, yeah, so, like, the, that other, let's see, last time it was... It was when Gambit was thought to be the assassin of Kelly. You know, here again, they do, you know, part two of this arc is a, or I forget if it was also part two, but anyway, the, the follow-up to the that episode is literally the Back to the Future part two one. And I, like, watching this, I should feel like, how is that, like, they did, it's it's so similar, you know, but I love it. It's just it's such a fun two parter here, and yeah, you know, Nimrod disguises himself as Cindy to get close to Xavier, and they do manage to destroy the the time machine, and you know, Fitzroy and Bantam show up, and I appreciate we didn't see the full message before because we see some of it now, you know, it's not necessary, there's no reason to show the audience that twice, you know, it's enough that we know, you know, whatever that message was, it certainly made um, Bishop certain, if I show this to Fitzroy and Bantam, this is going to cinch it, you know, so when we see it the second time, we, you know, now we understand, okay, yeah, that really does, you know, clearly, that makes it makes sense that Bishop trusted this, you know, trusted this plan so much. And let's see, yeah, you know, I I appreciate that they, you know, Fitzroy and Bantam reveal, you know, they they have it in them to redeem themselves, you know, and 
yeah, actually, you know, if Master Mold had not turned on Fitzroy and Bantam, he would have won. Fitzroy and Bantam wouldn't have helped out, uh, you know, in the in the battle near the the time machine, which allowed a second attempt. Which this, you know, a lot of this episode is that second attempt. And Fitzroy would not have recorded a message and handed to Bishop, which talks his other self out of fighting. So, yeah, and and you know. <laughs> They managed to create this scenario where it is completely necessary to talk Fitzroy and Bantam into helping because of the, the force field, which does feel like something, yeah, you know, in this universe, by the year 2055, 100%, you could, you know, something like that could be developed. And, you know, they threw a, a bomb, so we have the great little ticking clock in there and everything. And, yeah, you know, the, the day is one... Wolverine and Storm still have the, the you know, the time travel bands on, you know, and the, the charge will run out in a day or two. Aha! Another sad love story on the show, yet, yet again. You know, and I guess the very end of the episode allows for the possibility that maybe in the future the two will get together, even though that was you know, the alternate present that that happened. But, yeah. Um, amazing two-parter. I, I love this show. This is... I'm, I'm so glad this is getting another season on... Or I forget, is it just one season? Well, whatever, it's getting a follow-up on, on Disney Plus today. It's, it's really no wonder that the show is still beloved enough to, to earn that. And, yeah. I do believe that is it for this one. So, yeah, uh, catch you again tomorrow for Proteus Parts 1 and 2. Make mine marvel.